Good evening, Broncos country. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, but we're going to add our bigger Facebook community. So we've got everybody in, which is Mile High Huddle on Facebook and the Mile High Huddle podcast, den daily Denver Broncos coverage on Facebook as well. So plenty of ways to make sure you're going to come and see us. And as it's getting ready to go, Welcome in, everybody. This is Building the Broncos. I am Scott Kennedy. I am sitting in for Nick Kendall today. And as always, this guy over on this side is the regular on, on Tuesday nights. This is Carl Dummler. And Carl, it was a big day today. It was a, a record-setting day for trades today in the NFL. And the Denver Broncos were a part of one or two big two. trades. Yep. For all everybody that you know doesn't follow everything on Twitter and live and die – can you give us a quick recap on what the Broncos did today? They sent some guys away, they received, or at least one guy away, and then they uh, they received some some in return as well. What? Give me the give me the the Cliff Notes version of what what happened today, and then we'll we'll start breaking it down for you on what all this means. All right. So huge news of the day: Broncos trade for Jacob Martin of the New York Jets. I'm just, it was one of the trades. Well, I'll just put it out there. They traded for they, they gave a fourth back and got a fifth in return and uh, and got a rotational pass rusher adds to the group, keeps them at least got a little bit of depth with some guys coming back from injury. But of course, the big news, Bradley Chubb, fifth overall pick back in 2018, supposed to be that next cornerstone piece after Von Miller was kind of getting up there in age. And obviously, Bradley Chubb's not quite lived up to the hype. But uh, Broncos get a first round pick and a fourth round pick and running back Chase Edmonds from the Miami Dolphins and send back a fifth round pick next year in return. So, you know, it, it's it was kind of the news everybody was kind of expecting. Bradley Chubb has been a hot ticket item even before the season started. There's a lot of people kind of talking about trades of. You know, you move Baron Browning and, and yeah, we can get into the reactions here a little bit. But again, th those that's what's happened so far, that these are the two big moves to the Broncos, both at the edge position. All right. Well, let's let's handle a little bit of matters of business. I wanted to make sure we got that up. Yes, Bradley Chubb has been traded, but Broncos country, if you're like me, you're increasingly getting more concerned about cybercrime with people stealing your private data and invading your privacy. I am tech savvy. That's why I now use NordVPN on all my browsers, whether it's on my desktop, tablet, laptop, or phone. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and NordVPN protects you as a one-stop shop for all things cybersecurity. It's incredibly easy for me, to use, for me to use, which means I don't have to be an MIT graduate, just an Auburn Public School graduate to figure it out. With just one click, I'm protected. It's very intuitive. With my Nord VPN account, I can have up to six devices protected. I no longer have to worry about hackers, malicious sites, pop-ups. For the price of a single cup of coffee per month, I have complete peace of mind knowing that my devices and data are protected. Plus, with Nord VPN, I'm never a slave to media blackouts. What that means is when I go to England to follow the Den Denver Broncos, I can use my virtual location to a market that is showing an NFL game that I want to watch, including all of my streaming services that would normally say, sorry, not authorized in this country. So Broncos country, grab your exclusive Nord NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash MHH to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's NordVPN slash MHH. MHH to get four months free. Now, Carl, Bradley Chubb, it's happened. I was on this morning. Uh, I haven't been following the trade rumors. Big travel day yesterday. And I was like, 10% chance that someone is going to be willing to give this guy a multi-year deal, a first round draft pick and a multi-year deal. I just don't see it happening. And then as soon as I log off and hit the Twitter sphere, I'm like, yeah, it's really heating up with uh, the Miami Dolphins. I'm like, all right, this really is happening. Uh, and and uh, some people I talk to every day that were on the show, including Nick, uh, Ethan, DWI guys, who hung out with England. I'm like, okay, this is happening. I just got done saying I didn't think it was going to happen, but this is going to happen. What was your gut reaction to this deal with Bradley Chubb Coming off a win, three and five, you're still in the playoffs, and here comes one of your best players uh, being sold. What was your gut reaction on this? Honestly, it was bittersweet. I guess is the best way for me to put it. I I get why the Broncos did this. You know, you're, you're getting a player that maybe you didn't view as quite your future 
he was a very big risk with all of his injury history. And so are you really going to be that team that invests over 20 million a year in this player when you've already got Randy Gregory, you got Baron Browning. That's looking like he could be a real playmaker for you. Nick Benito actually making some plays these last couple of weeks for you. So he's starting to get some things going. Uh, Cooper has been a nice depth piece. Uh, so you at least have some players at the position. So you feel like you, you've got a little bit of extra and when you're lacking in draft picks, and now you got yourself right back in the first round after the Russell Wilson trade. You know, I, I get it. I get it from the team perspective of what they're trying to do to build for the now and the future. But at the same time, Bradley Chubb, like you said, one of the top players on the team, I'd put him as a top three or four player so far for the Broncos this season. Now it hasn't obviously gone as you planned, but to, to get rid of a guy that's finally playing like you thought he was going to be when he was an, the number five overall pick, it's hard to lose that when he's finally starting to pay off and now he's going to go to some other team and possibly pay off for them and help them go win a Super Bowl. You know, you never know like Von Miller last year goes off and helps the, the Rams to win a Super Bowl. So I, like I said, I get it. It still hurts because I really love seeing him play this year. He's been making a lot of plays. He's really taken his game to that next level of being consistent, both as a, a run defender and getting after the quarterback. And I was looking forward when Gregory gets back and Browning gets back. I've just seen that pass rush once again. But it just, like I said, it's, uh, I'm excited for the draft now, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess it, I should say that it part. makes the offseason more exciting. That's for sure. Yeah. I, um, we talked about it this morning. We've talked about it a bunch that if you can get a number one form, you probably make this move. You, you probably do. And, and, and for several reasons, you know, and the, the part I, I, I just want to reiterate to everybody is he had nine games left on his contract. You know, th this is a pending free agent that, you know, if you want to call him a one away, he, he was probably ready to move on too. you mentioned finally, you know, it's starting to pay off. It's been five years, man. Yeah. You know, he's playing on a four year deal. It's rookie deal. He's playing on his fifth year option. Your next option is to tag him. If that happens, it becomes acrimonious between all parties. No player likes being put on the tag. He's going to threaten to sit out. He's going to force a move anyway. So are you really wanting to dump four years, 60 million guaranteed uh, on an $80 million deal? Again, the, the, the deal for Randy Gregory, 70 million baloney. It's, it's a two-year deal for like 30, you know, which yeah. is still good money. Um, but it was going to cost probably twice that to do, to get Bradley Chubb. And Bradley Chubb's a guy who's had injury concerns. You know, that's what you talk about going into the season all the time. Uh, you know, can he stay healthy? Can he stay healthy? Well, now you've got something in return for it. You know, that the risk is in the draft now. And, and can you get another player? But I think this was the right move for both parties. Um, and Andrew Lampy coming in with the stars. Thank you, Andrew. He's saying, uh, good luck, number 55. I hope Miami fan base treats you better than this one. Never a bust, just unlucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just going through some numbers real quick. Um, we're talking Jacob Martin, one of the players that was brought in. In 69 games, he has 15 sacks. Okay, he's yep. been pretty productive. Randy Gregory in 54 games has 18 and a half sacks. Bradley Chubb, the key here is he's only played 49 games. In 49 games, but he's averaging more than a sack every two games. 26 sacks. But there's a three-year span where it was almost none. I, I almost think of Jacob Martin could be like a Malik Reed type. You know, yeah. maybe but sets the edge better, but gets numbers. You know, that's that's what I see. Yeah. Um, you know, so you're getting a little bit more depth there, and you have depth. If there was one position out of all the injuries that have decimated this team, if you could move anybody, it would have been an edge player. Um, you you've gone in, you've moved a, a very good young player and Baron Browning over there. You've got a good draft pick, and you've got Randy Gregory. Hopefully, you know, if he can get healthy, that's a big if, but for another year. And Jonathan Cooper is a good depth piece. First round pick. You could spin that into four another, four other players, uh, Carl, if you wanted yeah. to try and trade down. So as you said, it becomes a lot more interesting for sure. Yeah, th this team has a lot of holes and you weren't going to be able to get this team where you needed them to with the draft picks that you had. And, and like I said, now you're kind of looking at, OK, now we've got 20 million dollars freed up that we would have been paying this guy that now we can invest other places on on the team, plus a first round pick. Plus, now we've got a running back that is, is signed for the next couple of years. I mean, we can't forget about Chase Edmonds being a part of this deal. He's a proven running back. I mean, he's not great. Don't Let's not try to say that this guy's the next great running back or anything by that means. But he, he's a decent piece that gives you something this team doesn't have right now, especially after Boone went down with injury. 
gives you a dynamic running back that can make plays out of the backfield, both running and as a receiver. And so, like I said, it just it gives you a few more options of what you can do of how you want to build this team. And George Payton, he's one of those guys. He wants as many darts to throw at the board as he possibly can to, to see if something can stick and, and make it work. Yeah, and as uh, Phil says, yeah, I, I, I owned up to this one, uh, Phil, before, before I even saw this. But yeah, uh, Deacon Scott and Carl, good evening. What a trade. I know Scott was surprised. 90% chance he would stay. That's what I said this morning because it just made sense. But Miami came in with a deal basically that you really you could refuse, but you shouldn't refuse. You shouldn't yeah. refuse that deal. What winning this game in Jacksonville did was I don't have to sell. I'm still in this thing if I want to be. So if you want to come get one of my best players, you're going to pay a premium. Mm-hmm. And a first round pick, um, you know, and a, and a solid running back in there is a premium. That's a premium to pay for a guy again with nine games left on his contract. Um, and, and as Bradley Chubb says now, I, the other part I said about this, Phil also that I'm probably going to walk back now or just, just be wrong about is I felt like he would want to test free agency. Now, if he hadn't been traded, I'm 90% convinced he would have my 90% has been wrong, but I believe that Bradley Chubb was going to test free agency, which is one of the reasons you move him. You have those conversations with his agent that we're not privy to, but you have those conversations with his agent for the last three months. And if you don't feel that there's a good chance of you being able to bring him back, you trade him and you yeah. get the best deal you can for him. And I think that George Payton did a good job. Uh, the Dolphins are getting a good player. But they paid a price for it, for sure. So it's one of those, I think it, it should be a good deal for everybody involved. Yeah. You know, they, they view they have this window. And in the NFL, when you have a window, you go for it. I think of the Broncos, you know, with Peyton Manning. What do they do? They go spend big in that 2014 free agency, getting a keep to leave. Manuel Sanders, Marcus Ware, um, TJ Ward. You know, they they went out there and got pieces saying, okay, we know these guys have, have some risk. Marcus Ware with injuries, a keep to leave with personality. TJ Ward's kind of all over the place. You know, Manuel Sanders, he had been banged up since before that, but we got to go for it. This is our chance. This is our window. And so that's what Miami's doing. And Broncos right now, yeah, this team – as much as I, I still believe in the Broncos that maybe they can still make that playoff push if they get a few things get right over the bye week, I never viewed them as a Super Bowl team this year. Right. It was going to be years two, three, four of the of the Russell Wilson era. So uh, this helps set that up a little bit better. Like I said, of giving them better options moving forward. Yeah, and and, and again, was, uh, what how what's the message you're sending? You know, you're trading away your co- cornerstone players. Well, one, you're three and five. Your cornerstone players aren't getting it done. Now, that's that's an over exaggeration, oversimplification, because Bradley Chubb is playing really well and he's still young. So this isn't just a window trade for the Miami Dolphins. This is basically we're using our first round draft pick, but we're paying him free agent money. Yeah, <laughs> for Bradley Chubb, we're not. He's not going to be cost controlled. He's 26 years old. And we want to get six years out of this guy. And it's going to cost us $120 million to do to get six years out of him. Um, that's the risk they're willing to take. Uh, but Christian coming in here real quick. Let me uh, get to this one because we want to say thank you very much for sending in the yeah. uh, the, the super chat coming in yellow. It says, George Payton 100% made the right call trading Chubb. Dude is injury prone and would have been way too expensive. Pay Draymond and draft OL. Yeah, again, if you take a first, you can spin that into three or four middle round picks that would get you three new interior linemen if you wanted to. Or you finally get, dare I say, offensive tackle. What? <laughs> you know, I, I was talking to somebody earlier today about that of two two drafts now that we've seen with George Payton has not taken a single tackle yet. So he's been waiting. Maybe this is that draft. He finally pulls the trigger. He's he's, he's a guy that doesn't like to reach. But offensive tackle, because there's such a huge need around the NFL. You say he doesn't like to reach, but he's reached for a couple guys. Uh, That's true. I I guess it wasn't necessarily a reach. But when Montreal Washington is surprised his phone rings, that's a bit of a reach. Yeah. Um, You know, it it happens. Um, You know, but for for that point, I I agree with you for the most part, though. Yeah. Um, For sure. Like I said, he's usually... From what I understand, when looking at his board, uh, well, I haven't seen his board personally, but just talking to people that have, a lot of times he doesn't have a whole lot of players at each position. He's got kind of, um, I know one of the drafts, he only had about five draftable tackles in the entire draft or just the, the, the guys that they really liked. 
there's other guys that were draftable, but they just really didn't think they were a good fit with their team. And each time that they came up to the point that they were willing to draft him, the guys were already gone. And so again, the off in the NFL, playing Abraham play. Lucas to me. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. Uh, that's a tough one to explain. <laughs> uh, but it's like I said, they haven't taken a chance on it yet. I'm interested to see how he does because I think of his time in Minnesota. They never did a great job drafting tackles there. So was that was he part of that or was he fighting for other guys? We don't know yet. We're gonna have to see what he can do for the Broncos here. But shoot, you know, I've picked out two guys in the third round that have become starters and will be multi-year starters in in Abraham Lucas. And I'm I'm gonna say what what I mean by that is it's if if I can do it, I don't mean oh hey look at me I'm awesome. I just mean hey if I can do it, it can't be that hard to get an upgrade at at offensive tackle. Yeah. In the third round, we talked about you know we don't have a first round or we don't have a second round. Well, you do now. But you don't necessarily have to spend one of those to get upgrades on your offensive line. You can get those guys day two picks. You absolutely can get those guys yep. day two picks. Yeah. You, um, you can say that Abraham Lucas has outplayed Cross on the other side so far this year. Well, and, you know, my my boy Spencer Brown last year. Um, mm -hmm. who was, he was a running back I was watching this weekend because I kept hearing Spencer Brown, Spencer Brown, Spencer Brown as a running back. I'm like, wrong Spencer Brown for me, but... George Fox coming in with the star. He says, this is a good for both teams. Now we can get a good, we can draft a good offensive lineman, Dem Denver Broncos for life. Good luck, 55. A, you know, you normally, offensive tackle is a premium position for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and an offensive line, but a good offensive lineman will help your team more than a good edge. This team, this specific team, because you've got edge, you've got options at edge. Yeah, your offensive line needs drastic help. But again, it's not just about I'm trading this for an offensive line. You don't know what you're going to get with this pick. You could end up getting three or four players with this pick. We will see. It's definitely going to be to be interesting. And uh, we were some talking here about Draymond, pay Draymond, et cetera, et cetera. Draymond might be a little bit of a problem now. You know, he's again, what's what's the message that this is going to send the team in Draymond? What, there's an article on uh, on Mile High Huddle. Draymond was a little upset. He goes, I understand it. I get it. But, you know, you ask us to come out here and, and live and die for this team. And we're just, you know, trade it away. Just trade away. Yeah, that's how it works, man. There's very, yeah. this is the sport that is the, the hardest on your body and has the least player power. It's, uh, it's definitely tough. Definitely tough. Right. Um, and you know, you know, who also is tough is uh, Naj Altoff is tough. Appreciate you coming in, Naj. Let me mute my phone as my text messages are coming in. Um, he says, hey, bros, sick of all this. All of it. Year after year, trading away team captains. No regard for the loser culture that's now embedded in this team. To me, it's a reflection of leadership. Another five, six win season, and Peyton is gone. So, Naj, uh, follow up on this, and uh, I'll hit it Hit it when I catch up in the checks. We've got uh, some, some other supers and stuff. Follow up on this. I want you to make sure you comment. You mean next year, another five or six win season, he would be gone next year. Um, I think that's possible. You know, you go seven and 10, you go five and six this year, five and six, five or six next year. I think he, it, it would be, but he's, he's, it, they win five or six this year. He's going into next season on the hot seat. Yeah. Don't you think so? Don't oh yeah. Easily. Going? I mean, you can like the players that he drafts and still see, Hey, it's not producing wins. You know, I, I Looking at his draft classes, you know, we're seeing this draft class this year starting to finally produce here midseason, and, and it's great to see it. But part of it's also because one, guys are getting injured, and, and two, the guys in front of them just were not playing all that great either at times. And so is it that they are good players, that that's why they're earning, earning the starting position, or is it more just this team doesn't have as much talent as we thought, right. and so now you're just having to play all these guys on rookie contracts anyway? And which so, means yeah. I need more draft picks. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, <laughs> which you know, means which means I need more guys. Um, yeah, you know, and I don't know. I don't know too much about Draymond in the locker room. He seems to have been very popular. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm sorry, not Draymond, Bradley but Chubb. Bradley Chubb. Yeah, uh, in the locker room. But you know, part of the he's been part of this culture, Naj. That's something else you have. We kind of have to consider. Uh, the last five years, he's been part of it. You know, yeah. you mentioned that. Uh, no regard for the loser culture that's no embedded in this team. He's been embedded in this team for five years. You know, maybe some of this can be addition by subtraction where you are trying to change the culture and you do that by 
bringing in fresh blood, bringing in your own guys. We'll see. We'll see. And Garth Knight and Naj, we love you. Certainly appreciate you coming in with the with the big super like that. Garth, I apologize. I missed this as we were <clears throat> getting started, but he said, good gravy. I need this podcast. Thanks for being here for us, gentlemen. No, no, no. Thanks for being here for us. Otherwise, yeah. just me and Carl shooting the stuff in <laughs> yeah. up here, back here. And, uh, and you know, we say a lot of the same things, so you might as well go live and, and make sure we've got y'all got y'all on here with us. So appreciate you being here with us, Garth. And Andrew Baker coming in with the stars. Appreciate that, Andrew. He says, so, so what's up, building the Broncos and fam with the trade? How do y'all see this team the rest of the season? That's a good question. Um, you know, is, is how healthy is Baron Browning? That's the mm-hmm. question I have. You know, is Randy Gregory on track to be back here in the next, you know, week or two? He should be. It feels like he's been gone four weeks already. Yeah. Um, by week, you know, are you coming back out with Baron Browning dropping into his spot? Or do you have Baron Browning and Jonathan Cooper because Randy Gregory's still not ready yet? Yeah, I, I feel like you don't make this trade. Well, OK, you still make this trade because it is a first round pick. You hope that they felt pretty comfortable with these guys coming back. Because, yeah, you don't want Nick Benito and Jonathan Cooper being your starting edges out of the bye week. That, that's asking for disaster. Both those guys are a little undersized. They're not perfect in the run game by any means. They're still figuring things out in the pass game. Both of them are much better as backups compared to, to being a starter. I think of, you know, like Malik Reed. As a fourth edge guy, I, I like him. He's decent. As a starting edge guy, I am terrified of him being on the field. And so, like I said, I, I need at least one of Baron Browning or Randy Gregory back after after the bye week. Otherwise, that Tennessee Titans game, especially going against Derrick Henry, man, they're just going to go right at the edges and say, we're going to take this all day. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after that. But uh, I, I still feel pretty good about this team. I feel like the offense is finally getting a few things figured out. Greg Dulcich being there has really helped out. I feel like they're doing great of now working on some leveling with Greg Dulcich because he's got at least a little bit of athleticism to kind of run that seam route. And so you got, you know, KJ Hamler running the deep route to kind of take the safety. If the safety doesn't go with him, hit KJ Hamler. If he does hit Greg Dulcich, uh, you know, underneath or what are in the middle round or middle area. Um, got to get Cortland Sutton figured back out into this offense. He's kind of dropped off these last couple of weeks, but, uh, and then it's almost kind of a little bit of addition by subtraction by putting uh, Glasgow at center. Mm-hmm. You saw, you saw some time. You saw the offensive line kind of figuring a few things out. And I hate to say that because I mean I, I don't want to talk bad about a player that's injured by any means. But Lloyd Cushenberry has been a problem this year, and finally seeing at least a little Not bit just of this year, Carl. Well, that's okay, the three years. Vanity. He's been a problem for two and a half years now. Yeah, and so actually seeing the offensive line be able to hold up, give Russell Wilson a pocket to step into. You know that's been part of the problem is he's got a guy right in his lap and. You know, I, I've seen videos where they're like, hey, this guy's wide open. Well, he's got two 300-pound men coming right into his face. It's kind of hard to see when that's what's coming into your face. I'm not saying Russell Wilson's completely been great or by any means, right. but but it's still not been all, only him. And yeah. so, like I said, getting a little bit of veteran guy at the center position, getting guys on the same page, picking up the blitzes, giving Russell Wilson some time. You're seeing, I mean, we had a 98-yard drive. Like it was clicking, things were going. It was nice to see. Haven't seen that all year. The offense actually looked like it had some easiness to it. Right, I agree. And and I I started watching because I've been calling for a change at center. That's since basically I saw Glasgow in the preseason. So, okay, he, that's better. Yeah. So I'll call it week one. I've been calling for a change at center. I when he came in, I really started watching center. And yes, the line of scrimmage was set at the line of scrimmage instead of three yards in the backfield on every snap it makes a difference Mm -hmm. you know i've said it a zillion times when you troubleshoot you start at the what is the first thing that can go wrong where everything else doesn't matter you know it's like oh well my refrigerator isn't cold check the freon no don't check the freon check the power does it is it is it plugged in it's like well okay well no it's not getting any power okay well is it the plug or is it the socket well let me let me bring in my my vacuum cleaner no the vacuum cleaner isn't working either Okay, well, it's the power. There's nothing wrong with the refrigerator. Yep. There might not be anything wrong with Russell Wilson. I don't know because I don't. My power's out. My offensive line is getting thrashed. They've been yep. getting bullied for the two years I've been doing this, Carl. And I said and the insane thing is, is you know, it's 
it's the same guys. There's, there wasn't enough change. That's my biggest criticism of George Payton. Now, Lawrence is coming in with some stars. He might have a bigger criticism of George Payton here. So what's up, guys? I officially hate Payton. How do you give up Chubb when our defense is the only thing working? We could have traded Judy, got picks, and went after Waddle and Hill. With Chubbs, that would have been something to be excited for. Instead, we get two picks and a bottom barrel running back. Um you're not getting Jalen Waddle or Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Flat out, period. Just nobody's answering the phone for that unless they've got problems. You know, right. and then, then you're taking somebody else. That, that's Miami's not trading, is not selling. That's that's not where they are in, in their in this juncture right now. And two, and I'll say it again, you had nine games on Chubb's contract. You're gonna lose them anyway. So what you have to the defense is working. Okay, well, you're three and five. Where do you think you are with this team? And and that's the big question. Do you think you're going to make a legitimate playoff run and be something at the end of the year? If the answer is yes, then you risk losing Chubb for nothing at the end of the season. If the answer is probably not, I make somebody make me a deal that I don't want to turn down, which is a first-round draft pick. Yeah. So, again, I fully understand this trade. It put some questions in my mind when the, when the Jaguars won. I'm sorry, when they beat the Jaguars in London, put some questions in my mind. Does this keep Hackett around? Does this keep Bradley Chubb around? It up the price is what it did. It made, it made you push a harder bargain. Um, had some more supers coming in here. I wanted to make sure we got to, um, Phil McLaughlin came in about 15 minutes ago, which would be 12 after Phil, where'd you come in? Sometimes it's hard to do this. You need someone in the background. I need, I need one to be like me here. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to end up reading it, Phil. It's just harder to find on uh, on Facebook. But he says, what is Edmonds' pass-catch ratio? Edmonds is a very good receiver out of the backfield. Yep. So Chase Edmonds, um, not as a full-time starter. In fact, he's only started 17 games in his, in his five-year career so far. Uh, has catching numbers of 20 as a rookie, 12 in his second year, 53-43. And his, his time went down this year a little bit in Miami, which made him expendable of 10. So he's got a thousand yards receiving to 1700 yards rushing. So he is a good third down passing offense type of back. A, a very good one. Phil appreciate the stars coming in. Yeah. Like um, I said, he, he's different than any other running back you have right now. That's, that's a big thing you needed to add with Boone going down. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got the big back. You've got the, the Goldilocks in theory, you know, the guy right in between them and Melvin Gordon. And then you've got uh, a third down, uh, the, the, uh, the third down back type, the the pass catcher. Garth coming in. Can they Bronco, the Broncos draft an awesome center, please? I'm looking for the Lou Alcindor of football centers via draft or trade. Make it happen, George. Those guys don't come around too often, but you should be at least be able to get serviceable. Can I at least get somebody yeah. who is an average NFL center? Graham Glasgow might not even be an average NFL center, but he was a major improvement, major improvement over uh Lloyd Cushenberry going out there cold with no preparation. And the offense was remarkably different with Glasgow. Yeah. Coincidence? No. Sorry. No, <laughs> it's not. Right. Well, and you, you see all of a sudden Reisner starts looking serviceable again. And Miners on the other side. I think I only saw one really negative play by Miners in the second half. Gave up. a. I, I guess there was two. One was there was the the stunt that I'm not sure whose fault exactly it was, whether it was Miners or it was Turner. And then there's another one where he gave up the sack or he gave up inside. He tried to lunge and uh, gave up a sack. But otherwise, Miners started looking a little better. That first half, Miners didn't look great. And again, Reisner looking a little bit better. It just It's amazing what happens when you get, like I said, serviceable even around you. Other guys start looking a little bit better. That's why the offensive line... You could, if you have one star and four really bad players, you have a really bad offensive line. If you got four or if you got five average players, you probably actually got a pretty decent line. Mm -hmm. If we're looking at the NFL today, and so teams are looking for that one weakness, what, where can we attack? Well, it's been Lloyd Cushenberry for, like I said, two and a half years. Lloyd Cushenberry hasn't been by himself. Now, people might want to apologize for Dalton Reisner too. Well, he's having to cover for Cushenberry. Baloney. I mean, maybe so, but I haven't seen. I haven't seen much out of – I'll watch. I will – this next game, I will focus more on Dalton Reisner because I've been as critical of him as anybody in this space because 
I just thought, I was like, how is this guy getting a free pass? Every time I focus on him, he's getting his butt kicked. It's not just cushion breaks. It's not just a center. Your right tackle has been below average. Your left guard has been below average. And your center has been below average. And when Glasgow was a guard, he was below average. Yeah. So, you know, it's been it's been a problem. But Lawrence, you know, is, is, is fuming. And we get that, <laughs> Lawrence. But he says, yeah. and worth getting rid of Chubb for this deal just sucks. Yeah. Again, Chubb was leaving anyway. You know, so nine, if, if you just think about it, nine gave, games of Bradley Chubb or a first round draft pick and give me the first round pick. Right. I'll take it's, it. It's, it's kind of the same with like Von Miller last year. There's and a I'll good get chance. $6 million dollars in salary cap that I get to roll into next year. Yeah. And I, I love Bradley Chubb. I really did. I mm-hmm. think when healthy, great player, top three or four player on this roster. So you're right. This is actually, it hurts the team. But let's not try to sugarcoat this too much here. You know, like you said, the edge position, it does have depth. But Bradley Chubb is still a different player than a Nick Benito or uh, Jonathan Cooper, you know, or even. He's your best edge. Let's not right. let's not make mistake. Let's not make any any mistakes about this. But he's also the why we've said it a zillion times. I like to make this joke, you know, it's like, man, this guy sucks. He's overpaid. He's old. He's always hurt. Uh, we got to trade him. What? Y- you can't trade guys like that. Yeah. If you want to make a trade, you have to give up something you don't want to give up. Yeah. That's how trades work. You know, unless I'm talking about just a, you know, um it's a personality thing or a discipline thing, you know, then then you're selling because the addition by subtraction type of thing. And Big E Bronco reminds us it's actually the 49ers yep. we're watching, not the Miami Dolphins, because this is the 49ers pick. The San Francisco. Now you want to get mad about you know swinging big as a general manager. I'd probably be talking about for the next ten years about giving up three first round picks for Trey Lance, uh, and this is one of those picks that that San Francisco gave up to Miami. So this is San Francisco's pick. So keep an eye on the 40, 49ers. Uh, if you don't care how Bradley Chubb, if our big earns in here, I know he doesn't care about the Miami Dolphins. If uh, if you don't care how the Dolphins, Bradley Chubb does with the Dolphins, and you just care about the Broncos, you're focusing on the 49ers because this is the 49ers pick. So as he reminds us, Biggie Bronco reminds us, now we need the 49ers to not make the playoffs. Yeah. Absolutely. The problem is if you finish 500 or better in the NFC, you're probably making the playoffs. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. And right now, from what I understand, I think it's right around the 20th pick is where the Broncos would be at in the first round. If the if 49ers stayed exactly where they are and everybody stayed the same, the standings still half a season to play. So it, a lot of things will change, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy to think of Miami dolphins going from two first round picks heading into this season to now zero first round picks because they lost their one for the, uh, trying to get Tom Brady to come down, making phone calls to him before they should have, or whatever that was. And mm-hmm. now tampering. Trade this one. Yeah, yeah, tampering. that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not illegal unless you get caught, right? Yeah, exactly. That's all tampering. Um, if it was the, 49ers, if it was the uh, Patriots, it would have been okay. So go the other direction. Um, Phil came in about 13 minutes ago, so that's 20. So I got to scroll way down. Probably got some supers. Uh, we hit uh, Gary. Gary Lee's Palmer coming in. Um Appreciate you being here, Gary. I know it's yeah. been some work for you to come in on YouTube with Facebook giving you some trouble. He says, good afternoon, Scott and Carl. That's us. Good afternoon. Yeah. I will miss Bradley, but I think it's the best move. Go Broncos. It is, and it's 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 really bittersweet because you're like, how do we get into this position? That That's part of it, Carl. That's yeah. part of the bitterness. Is like, this was the year where we were going to be buyers. This was the year where we got the quarterback we needed. And here we are again, three and five, and we're sellers at the end of it. That that's upsetting. Okay. I get that. I get that. But reality is you are three and five. Yeah. And you're dealing with an asset that is going to leave nine games or a first round pick. I'll say yeah. it one more time. And and again, he was on probably what was it, close to 14 million, I believe. And it's halfway through the season. So you get seven million that you get to wrap into. Next year, there's two interior linemen in free agency. Three and a half million dollars gets you a new center, two new guards. Um, that's those are that's premium money for those guys. Uh, right. I think I looked it up the other day, and there's only like 
three guards that are scheduled to hit free agency that were above $4 million. So you can talk, if you want to think of it that way too, that might help. I got a, I got, I got two new guards in free agency and a first round pick for Bradley Chubb. Right. Okay. And, and the 20 million that I would have been paying to him. Right. That I can take elsewhere. You know, right. now, like I said, some of the people talked about Draymond. You probably weren't going to keep either both of Chubb and right. Draymond. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pay one or the other. Well, now it makes it a little bit easier to say, okay, Draymond, we're focused on you. You're, you're a part of our future. And, and I think that's the better move. Cause like I said, edge has depth defensive line. You, re- you would really be depending on a couple of those rookies taking that next step. Henningsen and um, and who's the other one? Uh, Owu, as well, being one of those guys that really just emerged onto the scene, became the next Draymond Jones. Well, odds of that happening, a little bit slim. So Draymond, he's really turning into a top 10 player at that interior position. And th- those guys are hard to find. <laughs> Talk about, I mean, you think of, a lot of the guys that have emerged finally in the NFL, a lot of them took that three or four years at the interior position to get there. So you weren't going to go get a rookie and all of a sudden they're going to be a top guy like Draymond Jones is right now. So I I think, like I said, we got some guys at the edge. You didn't have many at the interior. You can go pay him, go get those interior offensive linemen and free agency, rebuild this offensive line. You can really remake this team in one off season. And it's something that needs to happen. If you're a three and five team, you got to go remake the season. We've got Mark coming in saying, can someone help me understand the running back trade? How long well, is Mike Boone out? He's cheap. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're losing running backs by the minute. When I thought, when I saw it the first time, I thought they might wave Melvin Gordon. <laughs> uh, that might be part of it as well. Um, that's something to think of too. So um, good pass catcher. Again, offer something different than, than Melvin Gordon's a good receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, but more of a a third down guy when you're, when you're receiving yards are about equal as your rushing yards, or at least, you know, two to one, then, you know, it's, you're a, you're a third down type of back. So need a little more depth. Um, Murray is a hammer. This is more of a scalpel, um, instead of the thunder and lightning stuff. Um, KB 82 comes in at $5. He says, what's the ballpark figure of what we would have had to pay Chubb for his option year? How much money do we have to use on our O line and in, inside and, and inside linebacker? This is his option year, so yeah. he's on his fifth year option, uh, and it was fourteen million right in that neighborhood. Now you could have used a franchise tag on him, which was going to be in the neighborhood of twenty three, twenty four, twenty five million, depending on escalators around uh, around. And it's a, uh, I know it sounds really crazy to say, but you know, oh, twenty five million dollars is going to make him mad. Well, it, it would have. There would have been all kinds of back and forth in the press about, you know, I'm not going to play basically yeah. a holdout. I'm not playing on a tag. I will sit out a year. Um, and that's just the way it happens because I can, if, if I'm worth a franchise tag of 25 million, I'm worth a hundred million on the open market. Right. Um, and and that, that's what it comes down to, uh, Carl. Yeah. Th- these guys want security. You know, and, and that franchise ta- tag offers very little security for him. You think of Von Miller. I remember how heated that got with the Broncos, where the Broncos were re- releasing the overall money that they were offering and didn't put out the guaranteed money, which is the more important part of the deal. Right. And so everybody's like getting after Von Miller of how dare you be so selfish? And Von Miller's going, no, that's not what the problem is with this contract. And so there's was, was a lot of back and forth. And they finally came to a deal, which is great, but it just... It right. was getting to that point. You almost saw a separation between the team and Von Miller. The it, it's a lot like you know government and the reporters. Um, in this case, the people are the players, and they don't have the media carrying their water because they need access to the team. So you know, I, I learned this when I was in my twenties. <laughs> you know, watching watching the media oh he's got a contract he shouldn't be holding out well you just waived five guys under contract but they're not guaranteed contracts so that doesn't mean anything to you did it i don't mind an a-hole i can't stand up a, a hypocrite and the hypocrisy yeah. of saying that he should be in, in here he's under contract th- that hypocrisy makes me angry yeah um so talking you know he, we're just talking about guaranteed contracts and what that means and the, if whatever is guaranteed is all you need to listen to the rest is baloney yeah. Seven years, 50 million or five years, $70 million for Rainer. No, it's not. No, it's not. 
Yeah. Russell Wilson's is 163. That's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's not a $250 million deal. No, it's not. It's whatever is guaranteed. The rest is just add on BS, basically club options. If he's still worth it. Um, however, to add Kenny, to, to answer your, your question more, how much money do we save to use on our O-line and, and, and inside linebacker? Well, you, you get about seven, you get about $8 million in carryover cap this year. Some of the new guys you brought in might eat into that just a little bit. So we'll call it five. And then you're going to save 20 million a year that you would have had to pay him that you can then pay to Draymond inside linebackers are relatively cheap interior linemen are relatively cheap, uh, which, you know, comes back to a question that Phil has can Edmonds block. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I wouldn't okay. expect so he's a receiver. Yeah. <laughs> and would we take our number one and trade for a couple twos or a two and a three? Possibly. That was something that we, that, that we were talking about earlier. You could spin this into four more picks. Yeah. Um, and, and, and fill some uh, and fill in then too. So very possible, Phil. Right. I, I think if you are George Payton, you probably want to get to about 10 picks per draft. And the easiest way to do that, obviously, is is make that trade. And so I, I do think very good chance, unless a player that they just can't pass on falls into their lap. I don't see them trading up because, again, he's going to want as much draft capital as he can. Uh, but we got Christiana coming in with a $5 super chat. Appreciate that saying, Hey guys, you think the Broncos actually pick in the first or look to turn that into multiple day two picks. Peyton loves them picks. Thanks so much. MHH for life. You know, so much depends on where the pick ends up too. Mm-hmm. You know, it, if it stays there at 20, maybe you trade back to like 28 and you pick up an extra third and fourth round pick to make that equal out or something like that. I, I I'm not sure. I don't have the draft trade chart and I know that's not, accurate in today's NFL, but and every draft is different. Right. You know, but if it's like pick 12, you know, Hey, that that's great. Now you can maybe even turn that into two first round picks. Then you got another extra first round pick. Uh, I, there's just so much left to decide before we get there. Now, if it's in the late twenties, then if you're trading back, yes, you're only getting into day two picks. Yeah. And if, if the draft is like it was last year, we said last year was the ultimate trade down draft. The problem is, is nobody wanted to trade down then. Uh, you know, the strength in that draft last year was between 25 and 75 um, and not necessarily in the top 25. So nobody wanted to give up picks to pay a premium to move up. It could be possible. This is when you want quarterbacks. <laughs> this is when you want a quarterback to be at the back end of the first round and you talk somebody up, oh, the Broncos could take a quarterback. Russell Wilson thinks that, whatever. It's, it's yeah. all BS. Um, there was some discussion in here about general managers speak. You know, it's all poker. They they lie so much, they don't call it lying. You know, it's 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 coach speak. In this case, right. it's GM speak. Uh, yeah, you, can't that, believe, you can't believe any of them. When George um, Payton was saying they trade like, down, yes, they absolutely could. Yeah. Absolutely could. Yeah, George Payton said something about, we would have made this trade whether we were three and five or five and three. Maybe you do, maybe. but yeah, but maybe still, you're, you're probably realizing that would really. That's also my translation of saying we don't want the you know we don't want to give the appearance that we're throwing in the towel on the right. season, right? You know, maybe you might have again if I've approached Bradley Chubb who has an injury history and offered him, and if I've worked for two months on a deal with his agent and have not been able to come to an agreement on a contract extension and I know I'm going to lose him in nine months and I'm going to lose him for nothing, then yes, there's a very good chance I trade him and get a first round pick. The problem is, Carl, going to my you know soccer fandom, is the currency in trades is veterans and a figment of your imagination and draft picks. It's It's rarely ever player for player. And more importantly, the way they do it in international football is it's cash. You know, so I trade Bradley Chubb. He might be worth it. You basically, you're selling his contract and the new team has to renegotiate a contract. So I sell him for $100 million. I don't sell him for the hope and dreams that my first round draft pick is going to turn into, you know, the, the next Von Miller. I get $100 million. And then I go over and say, you know what? The Minnesota Vikings have a, an offensive guard. I'm going to give them $25 million for this guy. And I'm going to give this guy 20. So I can actually get better right away by selling one player and filling four spots because the currency is actually currency. It's cash. Right. 
Um, so it's, it is, it's, it is a little tough anyway, again, forget if you don't like soccer at all, it doesn't matter. The general manager aspects of international football are fascinating. They really are. Um, even if you don't like the game itself, um, Joseph Linares coming in with all the talks about the draft today. Is there a QB in the fifth or later that has a cannon accuracy four six speed that can develop behind Russ? <laughs> Those guys don't last till the fifth and sixth round. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of what I was thinking there when I, I was reading that comment. Uh, you know, sometimes you find that the diamond in the rough, the guy that usually if he has a cannon, he doesn't have accuracy. If he has accuracy, he doesn't have cannon. There, there's a reason they're going in the fifth round because there's something missing that you've got to develop. And uh, it's so, usually uh, arm strength at that point. Right. If they fall right. that far. I mean, Zach Wilson went number two overall. Um, cannon for an arm. Um, Bailey Zappi goes in the seventh round. I didn't think he should be drafted at all, honestly, because he's got a wet noodle for an arm. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean he can't play the game, you know? So no, uh, if you've got a, if you've got a strong arm and speed, well, they could Felipe Franks you and turn you into a tight end. Um, but, but usually not those guys don't last that long, Joseph. Um, but however, we will start talking about the depth of the quarterback position. Again, it, it, you, you heard me just say, if you're in the business of trading down, I'm, in, I'm interested in trading down. You want there to be as many quarterbacks as possible available because that's who you're going to get the most for when you trade up. The, the Chicago Bears uh, trade two first rounders to move up and get, uh, to get Justin Fields for the, I think it was the Giants. Um, right. They made that move. The San Francisco 49ers traded three first rounders to move up um, 20 spots to take to take uh, Trey Lance. Um, who was it? The Jets trade three second rounders to move up like two spots to draft Sam Darnold. So you want there to be lots. And this, this looks like a good quarterback class on paper, Joseph. If you want to trade down and you're not going to take a quarterback, you want to you want there to be quarterbacks available. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, Holy Diver says, Nick will kick himself for missing this one. You know, Carl, it feels to me, because I'm here for all of them. I forget which day is what. Yeah. It feels to me like most of the big news in 2022 has come on Tuesdays. It has. It really has. I, I feel bad for all the other shows. Well, no, I don't. It feels I really like Nathaniel don't. Hackett. Yep. Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson. You know, and now, yeah. and now trade deadline. Uh, yep. Tuesdays, baby. This is the prime time slot. That's right. You do not want to miss Tuesdays. Something's going to happen. And uh, Nick, yeah, unfortunately, he had a, a an event that he had to go to. And so I know he's frustrated that he's missing tonight. But I, I appreciate you stepping in here, Scott, and getting this chance to talk with me about all this. Because, yeah, this is, this is big news for the Broncos. It changes not – not only things for this season, but future seasons moving forward and uh, for better, for worse. I know we've, we've got kind of a mixture here, even here, even in the chat, some guys really ticked off. Some people really happy about getting this first round pick. And you and I both said, it's kind of bittersweet. You, you get, you get some good, mm -hmm. but the reason you got some good is because you traded some good. And part of it was, I wasn't ready to give up on the season. Yeah. You know, that was, that's part of it. And this just signals that they've given up on the season. Uh, maybe, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big smoke signal. You're right. And that's what mm -hmm. Naj coming back in, coming in, coming in Broncos orange. So this defense is suspect against the run. And now without Chubb, it's worse without question, mm -hmm. with, without question. This, the, the run defense got worse. I a hundred percent agree with you, Naj, but he said, I feel, I feel the most for the players, especially on D who have been, and I'm putting words in your mouth here, Naj, who have been, the only reason you're three and five is because mm -hmm. of the defense uh, to begin with. And now they're down a man. Uh, teams will pound the Broncos with the run, and I'm not sure they can stop them. Makes me sick. Yeah, it is. It's waving the white flag and uh, to a certain extent. I agree with you. Now it's up for some of these guys to step up and prove that it's not. That it's not. That, you know what? Um we will rally together and be better as a unit because we're not counting on Chubb to do all of it. Randy Gregory is going to come back and be a beast. Baron Browning is going to come back and be a beast. Um, but, but to what you just said, the defense is suspect against the run. That one's, it's hard not to say that's 
that's right. Um, to, to come up with a yeah, but on that one, there is really no yeah, but on that one. That one's just, yeah, your run defense got worse. Right. Um, Kenny asks, what are some projected first round right tackles in the draft? Um, there really aren't first round right tackles. You don't take a right tackle in the first round. If uh, you, you go after left tackles in the first round and if they don't cut it, you flip them over to right. Um I've been at the, I, I see those guys at the senior bowl. When I put a, an eye on them, I'm not this deep yet. Um, senior bowl is only a couple months away, man. It's three months away. Um, and that's when I start really honing in on, on those guys. And I'm going to go out to the shrine bowl this year too. And I realized they had 60 guys get drafted. So yeah, um, I'll hit both of them this year, KB. Um, but the, the top guys in the, in the first round, they'll be projected to be left tackles. Right. I, I can think of one for the right tackle, Tristan Wirfs. Played right tackle in college, obviously still playing right tackle in the NFL, that first round talent. But he was just that good. Mm-hmm. Like Iowa, they had another guy playing that well, left why, tackle. Why did they have those. a right tackle? Did they have a left handed quarterback or something? Or, you know, Bob Whitfield at Stanford only had one eye. You know, he had a, he had a, he could only play one side of the line because his, he, he had a, like a glass eye. Yeah. So, you know, Nick could obviously speak better about Iowa than I can. Yeah. I, I remember they, I can't remember his name, but their left tackle was a draftable guy. And I think they tried to switch him to right tackle and he really struggled to right tackle, but he was doing really good at left tackle. And they're like, Chris Wirfs, you're great at right tackle. Hey, if both guys are working better at each spot, I guess we'll just keep him there. And uh, so I, I think one guy that maybe if he enters the draft, you could be talking about is the OSU right tackle, Broderick Jones, you know, because they've, they've got two draftable tackles. So that's about the only time you really see a guy that's a right tackle is when that left tackle is also a draftable guy. And you're going, okay, now this is a very, very talented group. And, but then you have to start questioning, like, is, is it because just they're that talented or is it just the entire offensive line is that talented? Yep. And it gets covered up a little bit because you get opportunities. Uh, Cause that OSU offensive line, <laughs> they are ridiculous. I know their center is another player that a lot of people are talking about being maybe the best center in college. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but, uh, but again, couple guys, really the teams right now that you're looking at for first round talents, um, Georgia has a couple good tackles. OSU has a couple good tackles. Penn State, they have a great left tackle that I really, really like. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name. Olu Fashano. Is that right? I don't know. Okay. I, I can't name a left <laughs> tackle in the in, in college football right now. Go okay. Um, so that, that's another guy, Peter Skorinski of Northwestern. He's kind of the top guy that a lot of people talk about. Not sure if he's going to be a, a tackle or a guard in the NFL. So it's a decent class, actually, from what I've seen. I, I've, I'm with you. I've just started really starting to dig into this. Mm-hmm. I've just kind of checked out the big names. I haven't started getting into the, the next tier of guys and seeing who's going to be that rise or faller by any means. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into that a lot more now that we have a first round pick. Yeah. You know, it's kind of okay. hard to want to get into it when it's like, well, we're not even picking until the third round. How, how do we get into this a whole lot? So for this me, changes a lot of senior bowl um, and those, and it's actually, it's a little bit of an advantage to me not knowing them. And I don't mean that just to sound lazy, uh, but I go in with no expectations right. at all. You know, these guys show up and show me who they are when they are there. And I, I think uh, that crew, it's his name, Ryan for senior bowl. I mean, they do an amazing job of getting the right players there. Yeah. You know, so they do as good a scouting job as anyone. And Garth Knight coming in again, coming in green with the super chat. He says, here's a question. Who makes alignment decisions? I hear Russ really digs Lloyd Cushenberry. I don't know. I just shake my head. I got it right that time. See, <laughs> um, and that's what I I've said all along. I'm like, you know, say what you want about Nathaniel Hackett. But if, if, if Russ is picking his center, I understand that to a certain extent, but at what point do you say, this isn't working, man. You know, like I said, it's a definition of insanity. Yeah. Well, I can't see over Graham Glasgow. Can you see over the defensive tackle that's in your lap? You can't see over him either. Right. Um, you know, at least you can sidestep one way or another, as long as you know that you, the center that is engaged with the defensive lineman in front of you is going to hold his own. Yeah. And this is where I really think the biggest mistake that Nathaniel Hackett kind of made and maybe this is George Payton as well they really did kind of let Russ just take over and I know hey yeah. this I mean, is your franchise way, guy I don't know I'm, I'm not ready to, to make those accusations just yet 
Yeah, I, I just I, I look at some of the things that he is allowed compared to a lot of other players, like his entire family and his entourage are allowed to kind of be that. in the entire building. <laughs> uh, you know, no other player gets that. He has his own quarterbacks coach, which again, how's that working compared to your coaches? Is he disagreeing with your coaches and telling Russ one thing and your coaches are telling him another thing? And so it just there's a few little things that I just wish Hackett would step up and say, Hey, I got to take back control a little bit. I am the head coach. This falls all on me. I'm the one that's become, well, I mean, Russell Wilson's become, you know, a punchline too, but yeah. again, or if, if I'm going to be the one that's taking the blame, we're going to do it my way. If I want to be blamed for it. By God, I want to be blamed for the right things. Right. Uh, I want to, you know, do you hear what Scott said? Well, make sure it was something I said. You know, I've said plenty of things that are going to be wrong. I'll own them right. for sure. But at least make sure it was something I said. Right. Um, and a little bit of the Reisner talk here. And again, this is what I said about, you know, trading for Reisner. For what? You know, who's going to trade for Albert Okwebenham? They might, he might be waived. Yeah. You know, he could be cut. I'm not sending you anything for a guy that is on, that you won't even play when on, an offensive player you're going to make a trade for an offensive guy who couldn't cut it in the Denver Broncos offense right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's, well, it's been benched. Right. That, and he, does that sound, he had, I mean, when you, when you make it that simple, Carl, do you realize how stupid that sounds? Right. Yeah. Alberto had, had a handed to him on a silver platter starting tackle or tight end because nobody else was rising to the occasion. Greg Dulcich is injured, all those kind of things. And he still got benched even before Greg Dulcich came back and has done nothing for your team and so you're right if i'm a, another team i'm going i'm just gonna wait for you to cut him if i really want him which why would i even want him because if he's not making it on your team why do i think he's gonna make it on my team and make an impact and uh you know same with melvin gordon right now his value's never been lower dalton reisner value's never been lower and you can go find some other guys that are comparable in talent wise and and feel okay with it and not have to trade anything so it's uh, it's unfortunate. You kind of hope you can maybe pick up some late round picks off some of those guys that you were planning on getting rid of anyway, but the odds are stacked against you for that. So Patrick, good evening. Our friend at lioncoffee.com wanted to say hello. Who's coming in from Hawaii. Good afternoon for you. It's uh, it's nine o'clock my time. What's that put it about three o'clock in Hawaii. <laughs> so good afternoon, my friend. Appreciate you being here. Uh, we are wrapping up here. We're at 57 minutes and change. So, um, uh, We'll be getting out of here unless someone is uh, is coming in hot like Corey here. Came in a few minutes ago, coming in yellow. Says, I'm a little surprised that Broncos country is stunned today. Corey, so am I. Uh, George Payton did his job today. He had to trade him. He's not worth $25 million. This was a no-brainer. I'm not a big Gary uh, George Payton, Gary Payton, you know, the glove. George Payton fan. But this had to be done. It it was a deal you, you had to make at three and five again. And I won't say it again. Just last time for tonight, nine games or $6 million and a first round pick nine games of Bradley Chubb or $6 million and a, and a first round pick. Carl, that's a pretty easy decision with this team, isn't it? Yeah. If it was five and three and George Payton did this, I would be questioning it a little bit more just because you are in that win. Now everybody's got to go out there and win. And maybe you are viewing him a little bit more as a future player. And, and I'm glad that George Payton kind of waited and just said, Hey, we like this guy. We maybe don't love him, but we at least like him. And so you're going to have to pay that price to, to come get him. We're, we're willing to still pay him. Even if it, if it comes to that, but we can also go this other way. If you offer something that's intriguing enough. And like I said, I think that, Winning this last game drove up that price. I think he went from a second to a first real quick. And mm -hmm. teams realized the Broncos are still willing to hold on to him and still hold on to the season. And, and I don't think the Broncos have fully given up on this season by any means either. Like I said, th there's still a lot of talent at that edge position. You're getting a couple of those guys back here pretty quick. You know, your, your secondary is still looking really good on that defense. You got Josie Jewell that came back, made a lot of great plays in that game and looking strong for you once again. Offense had a few things starting to click. So you still feel halfway decent about this team. You, you feel a little less good about it with Bradley Chubb being gone for this year. Right. But also as a GM, you have to think the now and the future. You can't just be all in at this very moment and completely throw out the future unless you are like, okay, this is our year to win the Super Bowl. 
Well, being three and five, I don't think you could ever have that mentality of, oh, yes, this is our Super Bowl year. So uh, real quick, Garth Knight coming in, says hit the like button, folks. Scott Kennedy and Carl are great representatives of the fan base. I'll tell you what, I may not be a representative of the Denver Broncos, but I am a representative of the MHH and had a blast in London getting to meet some folks. Um, and hopefully the, it, was, it was fun being out there and introducing myself. Hey, I'm Scott Kennedy. I work with a big YouTube channel called uh, Mile Huddle. And they're like, oh, yeah, we follow you on Twitter. And uh, I got a chance to work on some of my accents. All of them end up sounding like, uh, you know, redneck Australian, no matter what I do. But <laughs> check out the fan video that I did. Um, one of my favorites was the woman. I was like, so what about you? What you? She said, well, I, I don't watch the football. Uh, this is my first game. And, uh, you know, the guys from Northern Ireland, the second one in the middle, I had to listen to four times to figure out what the hell he was saying. You know, it's like, it's like, well, don't they speak English? I'm like, have you been to Boston? And have you been to New Orleans? Mm -hmm. They speak English, but you're not going to understand them. Uh, yeah. Very different. So had, had a blast, Gar. So appreciate the comments. Uh, Tom coming in here just about getting us out. Edmund's on a two-year, $12 million deal. So him and Chubb pretty much match salary. Love the trade. No sacks in three games. Browning on the, uh, always on the field. Um. I looked. I was really paying attention to to uh, chases for next year because he's basically expendable, um, based on that deal. So let me see his cap hit for this year. It's only a million. That's what I thought. So his cap hit that that the Broncos are good for was only a million. So that meant he had some money um, tied up in next year cap hit for dead cap hit for next year zero. Yeah. So you you have to remember the Dolphins have to cover his guaranteed money. Right. So it's not just a, or they okay, already had two years. Already paid him. Right. They've already they're paid all him. that. So it, it's only the, uh, the base salary and it's, it's the game checks left for this season. And then, like I said, next year, it's still just the money that's left beyond the guaranteed money. Right. And so it's not a, it's not a $6 million that the Broncos have to pay this year. It's not a perfect split between him and basically Chuck. you just look at the, the at the base salary which is a fraction of how you're paying these guys because you're paying them mostly in bonuses and spreading across dummy years which is why he'll have a a dead cap hit for uh for the dolphins next year i would assume um uh garth knight paying to at somebody here easier said than done russ and his camp are out there russ is the david koresh of the nfl the broncos need to believe or suffer the consequences all right. Not sure what that means exactly, but uh, okay. <laughs> Garth, we love you and thank you. Um, coming up on uh, Adam Walker was blocked. Yeah, I did that. You know, don't come into it just talking trash. That, that bores me. Um, you know, have something to add uh, and don't just start talking trash. That's that's boring. Um, I'm I'm love counter uh, discussions. We we've got very heated. Point counterpoint on this both sides of this trade without yeah. being trash talking morons. Yeah. So I, um, I could easily see this be one of those where we look back and say, man, Bradley Chubb, Bradley Chubb turned into a top 10 pass rusher for the next four or five years. And Miami got themselves a player and mm -hmm. helped them win some Super Bowls. And and Broncos have that first round pick turn into nobody. And that player busts out and everybody's looking back on this going, man, what were we thinking? You better and, off with Von Miller last year or with a second, third round pick for a player that was leaving anyway. Right. And that's, that's again, where we have to figure out process compared to how it actually turns out. Sometimes you could do the perfect process and it still not work out. Right. Yeah. And, and again, part of that is because you're trading in unknown capital with draft picks. Yeah. If you were dealing with cash, I could take that money and go and buy more established players and yeah, it, anyway, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we've been, we, this was building the Broncos. I was very happy to be able to step in and, and pinch hit for, for Nick Kendall. Nick will be back next week. In fact, Nick and I will be back on tomorrow night for mile high insiders. Don't I look like a mile high insider? I mean, I got the, the, of course. the background and everything, Man, but we'll, we'll over talk a little bit more of the fallout. Nick and I also like to hit on some of the rest of the NFL. We'll talk some other, uh, you know, some of the other moves that were made. Uh, and we'll take a look forward to some of the next games and what this means and all kinds of stuff tomorrow. But this was Building the Broncos. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at BTB Football Pod uh, and Broncos for Breakfast Pod for Thursday. That one's just kind of there in the way. And the Mothership account at Mile High Huddle. 
Check out huddleuppod.com for all of the greatest merchandise and uh, facebook.com slash mile high huddle pod. So all of those things. Uh, appreciate you being here. Carl, thanks for letting me sit in for it tonight and uh, I'll see you again next week. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you for, for subbing in for him and glad to have you back in the States. Glad you had a good time over there. And like I said, everybody go check out his videos from over in London, getting to see that, that Broncos country it's, it's getting worldwide. It's no longer Broncos country. It's Broncos world. Mm-hmm. And that, that's exciting. And we appreciate all of you joining us here from all over the world right now, just to listen in. And it's been a great discussion. I know that we've disagreed some tonight, all of us, but Hey, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we're still all fans of the same team. And uh, I, I think there's, there's good things ahead for them. Yeah. This again, I still think this was the right move. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. Part of it has to do with how you well you use your draft picks, you know, and, uh, and it goes, but I agree with you. Five and three, this trade doesn't happen. Three and five, it probably needed to. Yep. Um, and, you know, and again, if you're five and three and on the right path, you probably have an extension in his pocket ready to go. Um, but we'll see. You know, I, I think part of this will also be, and then, we'll, then I'll get out of here just to reiterate one of your points is, can you resign? Can you resign Draymond now? You know, can, well, that, that makes a difference because I agree that it would have been tough to bring them both back. Now you get a first round pick and you can focus on Draymond and, and free agents. So on that note, y'all, we will be back tomorrow at Six Mountain, Nick and I, for Mile High Hutters, Huddle, Mile High Insiders on Mile High Huddle. The tongue twister. On that note, I better go to bed, Carl. So <laughs> appreciate y'all, and we will see you next time.